Hello and thank you for viewing and tuning in to the Clark Report. I am Clark. I was just on Facebook and I ran across a link to a recent statement Dr. Creflo Dollar made to his congregation. And while viewing this particular video, I was disgusted. And it was just appalling that another man of God would make statements that he made concerning the recent settlement of Bishop Eddie Long. Now for those of you who may not be aware, Bishop Eddie Long was accused of sexual misconduct by four young men uh, approximately about a year or eight months ago. Um, when these allegations came to the forefront, Bishop Eddie Long of course denied all of these allegations or claims of sexual misconduct. So much so that he made a open statement to his church and to the world that this was an act of the enemy, that he was not going to waver, he was going to fight this like David fought Goliath. Now, for one to use this particular incident or this particular story to say that you are going to fight anything, you are saying to the world that not only do I have truth, God, and the backings of my church behind me, this is just blatantly a fabricated story conjured up by these men. Now, not even a year later, even before this was to go to court or to appear in court, the bishop decided that he was going to settle out of court for a substantial amount of money to these four young men. And we're talking about money in the millions. Now, I don't know about anyone else, but I'm sure there's others, millions of others, that are questioning his recent act of selling out of court. Now, you can't in one breath say that you're going to fight something like David fought Goliath. And then in the same breath, you're going to say, I'm going to settle? Or not a year or so later? Or, or give in? That shows your guilt. I mean, it is is evident that you were guilty from the beginning. I mean, it's, going to, it's not going to take four people. I mean, one is enough. But four individuals coming out with the same story, the same scenarios of how you lavished him with gifts, flew them across the country. I mean, this was a, a pattern that you had. And that in itself um, let me know that you were guilty from the beginning. But when you sell it out of court, I was like, oh, okay. Now, but on the flip side of that, Dr. Kreplo Dollar decided that he was going to defend his brother in Christ and indicated in his sermon to his church that this was just like an incident or an accident that we all have and we all ask God for forgiveness and we go on. Yes, we do ask God for forgiveness and yes, we want forgiveness from God. But when you are a minister of the gospel, no, I know, I know, I know that no man is perfect. But when you are ministering, you are giving sermons and you are teaching people how to live for God and what to do in living for God, it's difficult for some of us to, and most definitely for those of them that are based in Christ, to just forget this or just push this under the rug and say, okay, he's just a man. No. It's a difference. You have to understand when people are babes in Christ or people look up to their pastors or look up to their bishops, you have a responsibility as a man of God. The Bible says that if you mislead people, you are held accountable for that. And you have misled a lot of people to believe that you were something that you were not. This was going on for a long time as you were when you were the, the bishop of the church. Before you were the bishop, you was the elder then or pastor or whatever you want to call yourself, but you were affiliated with the church, but you were still you were not your I guess your label wasn't the same or your stature or your whatever. But anyway, I really am appalled and at Dr. Kreplow's statement and he went on to say that, you know, God was his insured and God insured him and he 
pay the premium. Oh yeah, God paid the premium, but God also knew that he was guilty. And for him to lie not only to God's people, he was lying to God, in a sense. And directly, he was not able to, uh, he decided not to come out and say, Yes, I am guilty of these acts, please forgive me, and I pray that God forgives me. You know, but you chose to take another route and say, No, this is a bunch of foolishness, this is lies, these are lies, I'm not guilty, I'm going to fight this like David fought Goliath. And then, sometime later, you decide you're going to sell out of court. And you want people of God or the world to say, Oh, okay, he's, um, he's just a man. No. You stepped on a lot of feet when you lied. And I think that selling out of court is a cop-out. I think that it was an easy way out. You thought it would be an easier way out for you, but I think that you should be um, reprimanded for all that you've done. I don't think just selling on the court should be the end of it. I think that you, as a minister of the church or the pastor of that church, should be set down or silenced or replaced because you have misused your powers or your your your. Um, position in the church and I think that the board of directors or that whoever is in your church need to look and take in consideration that this was an act that isn't appropriate and I'm not talking about homosexuality I'm talking about the act of taking advantage of these children you know because this is not acceptable I don't care who you are when children are involved when you are misleading and manipulating children or people period I have a problem with that and I think that a lot of women who put their trust in their pastors who lead their children to their pastors to for conference for guidance are going to be questioning all the ministers across this country because of this act you know and yes you can say oh Lord not me well who says not can't be you a long said the same thing and he was guilty as a fake dollar So, I'm going to come back because, um, take a break and, and come back. Um, when I return, I'm going to hit more on this subject and um, some other things that are out there that needs to be um, talked about. Until then, God bless.